Hi bag bakers, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa and I am with Sew Yours. Today I am excited to be sharing with you the latest sewing pattern that you can get on my website at sewyours.com and that is the Laverna crossover. So it's been a few months since I released a sewing pattern and that's just because I've been so busy with retail orders but I did get some time over the last month to go ahead and design this beauty right here. And let me explain the inspiration for this bag. So I went ahead and decided to bring in three quarter inch figure eight strap connectors on the website. Uh, we already do carry the one inch uh, figure eight strap connectors, which is a bestseller. So I thought that the three quarter inch was a nice um, change as well, but I didn't want to use them as a strap connector. I wanted them to be a focal point on the bag um, and also to be a decorative accent. So I think I accomplished that pretty well on the Laverna crossover. So we've got the two three quarter inch um, strap connectors right here. We've got a zipper closure. Now this is a bag with binding. So I have placed this at a confident beginner to an intermediate uh, skill level. But if you've done a bag with binding before, you'll be able to make the Laverna with no problem at all. On the back exterior, we have a zipper overlay. Now this is the same zipper overlay that I sell in acrylic template form on my website. So you guys can go ahead and just use that acrylic template if you'd like, um, if you already own it. Um, and this gives you the uh, perfect spot to feature a bag tag. So on this particular one, I went ahead and put my personal bag tag right here that has my Sew Yours brand on it. However, uh, I am selling the hardware kits for this particular bag and they are going to include a handmade bag tag, which I think looks beautiful because it is an oval bag tag and it complements the roundness of this overlay right here. So that is something that you will get if you go ahead and purchase the hardware kit. Let's go ahead and take a look at this version right here. So this is an alternative to the one with the figure eight strap connectors. So you can make your front of your bag have the overlay as the feature. So that is the decorative feature on this bag. And it looks really, really pretty. Uh, or if you want your front of your bag to be a plain panel, just like I have right here, you can feature any print that you want or any panel that has a large print. So that is a great feature of this bag as well. So you can go ahead and switch it up if you want. I went with Marine Autotex Vinyl for the gusset, paired it with quilting cotton on that one. The lining in all of these is quilting cotton. This one, I went ahead and used a faux suede fabric. This is actually a fabric that I am testing to potentially carry in the future on my website. The only reason I may not carry the um, fabric on my website is because I don't know that I have the space in my studio to go ahead and store it. So we'll see, but I think that this fabric sews up beautifully. I really like the look um, that this bag has. And in today's video, we will be making another one with the same fabric in more of a purpley tone, uh, plum I would call it. So you'll see that in a moment. Now this one right here, I went ahead and instead of doing a three quarter inch wide strap that I made myself like I did on the other two, I went ahead and attached a one and a half inch wide webbing right here directly to the 45 millimeter O-rings. And I think that this really makes this bag pop. This is our brand new railroad webbing that we have available on our website in multiple colors. So you guys can check that out if you're interested in the webbing. Um, this one here I made with the same navy blue um, Autotex marine vinyl for the exterior. Uh, paired it with the uh, Dusty Rose zipper tape in rose gold that is also on our website. This holds a fold and go wallet beautifully. So this is the fold and go wallet that I went ahead and um, sewed up recently in a sewing tutorial. You guys can check that out in the description box below. I'll put a link there for you, but it fits perfectly. So any full size wallet you can carry in your Laverna crossover, no problem. So let me share with you how I came up with the name Laverna. So I had made this particular bag at the time and I thought that it was a very classic looking bag. So I wanted a classic or an older name for this particular bag. So I was doing an online search of names to get some inspiration and Laverna came up. And when I looked up the meaning of Laverna, it means born in the spring. Well, it's spring right now, so I thought that was very appropriate. So I wanted to go ahead and I thought that Laverna was the perfect name for this particular bag. I've done a separate introductory video that goes a little bit more in detail on this bag, the hardware that you're going to need, the stabilizers, the interfacings that I recommend and the fabrics. If you wanna check that out, go ahead and check out the description box below. Now we're gonna go ahead and just jump on into it and start making up our own Laverna crossover. Here's all my fabric, zipper tape, 
hardware and binding laid out ready to go. So let's talk about first uh, the stabilizers and the interfacings that you're going to need for this bag. As far as stabilizers go, I recommend using a lightweight uh, fusible stabilizer such as Decaville Lite. I've gone ahead and already ironed that on to all of the pieces that require the Decaville Lite. We'll go over that as we come to those pieces. Uh, we'll need some woven interfacing for any quilting cotton pieces. This can be skipped if you're using um, waterproof canvas or vinyl or cork. You don't need any woven interfacing, but I am using quilting cotton for my lining, so I do have the sew woven fusible interfacing I sell on my website on my pieces. You could also go with the SF101, which is widely popular as well. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about the exterior front and back of the bag, as well as the lining. So these are uh, the exterior and lining panels, which is pattern piece A. You need two exterior with your stabilizer ironed onto them, um, and those are going to be centered on those panels, and that is pattern piece A1. And then you'll need your two lining pieces. For my lining, I'm going with the Cave Facet uh, Coleus print right here, which I think is really going to pop against this nice plum color. So as it relates to the bag, that is the front exterior here, the back exterior, and then obviously the same difference on the inside for the lining. Here I have my two lining pocket pieces right here. That is pattern piece B, so you're going to need two of those. And that's going to be the pocket lining for the exterior back, as well as the pocket lining for the inside here of the zipper pocket and the lining. Here is my zipper panel pieces. You're going to need two exterior, and this is pattern piece F. And you're also going to need stabilizer for those. That's pattern piece F1. And you're going to need two lining pieces. So our zipper panel is right here on the bag on both sides of the zipper tape itself. So the exterior and then the lining on the inside. Here is my figure eight uh, connector piece, and that is these pieces right here. So there's four individual pieces. We're gonna start off by making one large piece and then cutting it down to four. So I've got my figure eight piece right here in my exterior fabric. I've prepped this out um, with a line drawn down the center and double-sided tape on either side of the line. So we'll go ahead and talk more about that later when we get to making the bag. I have prepped out my crossbody strap just the same with the double-sided tape and the line down the center. If you are using a webbing, you do not need to cut your crossbody strap. You can skip that. Here is my gusset. So the gusset is at the bottom of the bag. So here is the gusset. And then this is our strap connector that wraps around the bag that attaches the O-ring or if you're using a rectangle ring. So our gusset is pattern piece E. You're going to need uh, that in addition to your gusset stabilizer, which is E1. And then you're going to need a lining piece as well. And then here is my strap connector piece, which, which is pattern piece G. And I've got that prepped out just the same as my crossbody strap and my figure eight connectors. Here I have my overlay pieces. So this is my exterior zipper overlay. That's pattern piece C. I've prepped that out by adding double-sided tape to the back side. Here is my zipper over overlay for my lining. That's pattern piece D, and I've done the same. I've prepped that out. If you already own these templates or you want to purchase them, you can go on my website. This is the Curvy Pocket Pal, and this is the original Pocket Pal. These are definitely time savers, and I highly recommend uh, getting yourself some of our acrylic templates. Now we are down to our zipper tape and our hardware and our binding. So for binding, you can go ahead and use foldover elastic, which is what I'm using today. I sell this on my website. This is our new color, which is our mint green. Um, you could use double fold bias binding, or you can use waterproof canvas. It's completely up to you. Uh, zipper tape, we've got our main zipper closure right here, which I recommend sticking with number five zipper tape. And this is going to be the same length as our zipper panel. So I've got that ready and I've got two zipper pulls because I want to do that, but you can certainly go with one zipper pull if you'd like. I've got my two zippers that are eight and a half inches um, in length for my zipper pockets on the exterior back, as well as the lining. 
you can do number five zipper tape or you can do number three i am doing number three um, you'll need a zipper pull on each of those the um, zipper tape i'm using is from my handmade space uh, these two flower zipper pulls are also from my handmade space and these two pulls are from my website uh, you're going to need a bag tag if you want to use a bag tag it's completely optional if you're getting the hardware kit you are going to go ahead and get the handmade bag tag i'm not carrying the rainbow finish on my website this is uh, a finish that i purchased from another supplier on etsy i can't remember who it was we do carry it in nickel light gold rose gold antique brass and gunmetal so if you want to purchase the bag tags on on its own you can go ahead and do that on our website we've got two 45 millimeter o-rings but you can use rectangle rings if you'd like we have a three quarter inch strap slider uh, that is necessary if you're doing the three quarter inch strap that you're making yourself however however if you are doing the one and a half inch wide webbing then you obviously are going to need a one and a half inch wide uh, strap slider we do sell those on our website as well you're going to need your two three quarter inch uh, figure eight strap connectors you could also do one inch strap connector connectors if you want but if you're going that route then you're going to have to increase the width of your um, strap connector pieces to two inches um, another alternative that you can do instead of the figure eight strap connectors is you could use some rectangle rings so that's an option for you as well you're going to need at least six rivets or more if you'd like to add additional rivets um, sometimes i like to add additional rivets to both sides of my overlays um, but six is the minimum that i would recommend and rivets are optional as well you can always go ahead and just sew on your straps um, that's perfectly fine and also optional is a three quarter inch wide um, strap end right here or if you are making a one inch wide strap obviously you'll need a one inch wide so on and so forth but the pattern calls for the three quarter inch wide strap end so i've got that here so that is everything that i need to make my um laverna crossover i did want to quickly share with you this variegated thread that i recently got from Sia swag bags i think that that per pairs perfectly with the zipper tape and the colors that are in the lining so i'm excited to use that all right let's go ahead and start sewing her up the first step in the pattern is to prep out our crossbody strap figure eight connectors and our strap connector so I've already done that and I showed you that earlier. All you have to do is find the center of each of these pieces uh, lengthwise, draw a line, apply some double-sided tape on both sides of the lines that you drew, and then we can go ahead and set those aside for later. Now we are gonna go ahead and make our crossbody strap. You can skip this step if you are working with pre-made webbing. So what we wanna do here is we're gonna remove the paper backing from one of the sides of the uh, double-sided tape that we went ahead and placed and we're going to begin to fold the raw edge in towards that center line that you drew then you're going to repeat the same process for the opposite side once you've got both of those raw edges folded in towards that center line i like to use my cricut brayer to make sure that i get good contact with that double-sided tape so i go along the length of the strap now you're going to fold this in half once more and clip it into place these rose gold clips are available for purchase on my website and these are great for vinyl and cork so that they don't leave dents like the quilting clips do. So let me go ahead and get this clipped then I'll take this over to my sewing machine and I am going to sew down the open side first at a eighth of an inch seam allowance and then I will sew the opposite side at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right I got my strap all made check out that variegated rainbow thread it is absolutely perfect with this fabric so excited about that all right let's go ahead and move on into doing our figure eight connectors so all i have to do with my figure eight connector piece is do the same process remove the double-sided tape and fold it in towards the center line however we're not going to be folding it that additional time like we did with the strap so just folding in the raw edges to meet the center line so let me get that done all right, I've got that folded in towards the center line. And now it's time for me to go ahead and divide this up into four pieces. You will go ahead and reference your pattern for the measurements on the four cuts that you need to make. So let me go ahead and get those cut up. I've cut up my figure eight connectors into four different pieces as indicated in the pattern. I then went ahead and measured in from this left side two inches and made a little mark. I did that for all four pieces. What you're going to have is one smaller one, two that are the same here in the middle, and one larger one 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with the largest one and one of the two that are the same size. Um, and we're gonna grab our figure eight connectors. And we're gonna go ahead and slide on a figure eight connector onto one of them. Fold this over to meet that two inch marking that you just did and clip it into place. Do the same thing for the other one. All right, once we do that, we need to go ahead and pair up these two with these two. To do that, you're going to take the smallest one and the largest one, they're gonna to be together. And then the two that are the same size, they're gonna to be together. So the same thing, we're gonna go ahead and find the two inch mark, and we're gonna go ahead and slide it on to the D-ring, or excuse me, to the figure eight connector. And do the same thing for the last one. And here we have our connectors all prepped and ready to go. So now we can go ahead and add them to our exterior front panel, which I have right here. You wanna grab your exterior front panel pattern piece A and use it as a guide. It take your pattern piece A and place it on top of the right side of the exterior panel A. And you're just going to shift it down uh, about an eighth of an inch. And that'll give you enough room to make a little marking where each of these lines are. This is where we're gonna place our figure eight connectors. So I'm just transferring over the little markings right there so that I know where to place my connectors. And we're gonna repeat for these ones right here on the bottom left corner. So I'm just gonna expose the fabric a little bit. Now that I've got the markings transferred over to my exterior panel, I like to just kind of do a test run and uh, lay my connectors on top. So I'm starting off with the grouping that has the equal lengths right here. And we've got the first set, we've got marking number one and marking number two. We are going to be placing the left corner uh, on marking number one and the right corner on marking number two. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom. We've got marking one and marking two. And I usually like to go ahead and make sure that the bottom corner right here is flush with the fabric. You are gonna have some overhang on uh, your connectors right here, which we'll trim down later after we go ahead and sew these into place. So that is my first connector. Then we're gonna take our second, second connector. This is the longest of them and the shortest of them. The shortest is going to be at the top. And you're going to place the left corner at marking number three right corner at marking number four. And once you've got those placed and you know that you like the placement of them and you didn't accidentally cut anything too short, then you are good to go ahead and flip these over, add some double-sided tape to the wrong side of the figure eight connectors. I usually like to work with one at a time. Uh, on a side note, I want to kind of just point out some variations that you can go ahead and do with this. You are obviously going to go ahead and have to cut different lengths um, to accommodate uh, what you might want to do, but you could go ahead and change the placement of your connectors. Maybe you want to have two that are equally across from each other like this, and obviously you would have your strap connector going the whole way. You might want to go ahead and do it horizontally. So you can make this your own and um, change the placement of the figure eight connectors. When I was designing this pattern, I went ahead and was playing around myself and I found that this was the most visually appealing in my opinion. So that's why we've gone ahead with this placement right here. So let me go ahead now and I'm gonna work with the right side um, to begin with. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my clips, add some double-sided tape and I'll get it replaced down here. Okay, now that that is placed, I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine. And I like to start by sewing close to the figure eight connector right here. Um, and I make sure that I backstitch. I do that for both sides. Then I come in on my sewing machine and I start to sew backstitching here at the beginning, all the way down 
to where I made my stitching right here. And you're going to do this at a sixteenth of an inch seam allowance, an eighth of an inch if you can't quite get that close to the edge. And you're going to do the same thing for the opposite side coming in and stopping right here. Then flip it over and do the same thing for this side. All right, the first set is sewn on. Now I'm going to repeat the same exact process to add the second set. All right, there is the second set on. Now you just want to trim away that excess, which I've already done on the first set. And our front exterior panel is now complete. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and work on our zipper pockets on our exterior and our lining. The process is exactly the same. So I'm going to be doing this one off of camera, but it's exactly the same as the exterior. So you're going to want your bag tag if you are going to be doing a bag tag on your exterior zipper overlay. So I've got that here and I've got my exterior zipper overlay, which is pattern PC here, already prepped out with the double sided tape on the wrong side. I have already gone ahead and um, added my eight and a half inch zipper to the shorter side of my zipper pocket lining um, and I've clipped it into place. I've got my zipper pull on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and take it over to the sewing machine and I'm going to base stitch this on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, that is now base stitched on. I did the same thing for the lining pocket. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to go ahead and bring the opposite end up to meet the wrong side of the zipper. So we're basically creating a tube right here. So you're going to want to be able to see the top side of your zipper and we want to go ahead and clip this into place. And we're going to base stitch this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance as well. I am adding double sided tape to each edge of the zipper tape. Do that for both your lining and your exterior zipper pockets. Okay, once you've added your double sided tape, you can go ahead and put these aside. And working with my exterior to start, I'm going to go ahead and place my zipper overlay one and a half inches down from the top center. Find the center of your overlay. I usually make a little marking. All right, now we're going to take this over to our sewing machine and we're going to go ahead and sew along the outside edge at a 16th of an inch seam allowance or an eighth of an inch if you can't quite get that close. All right, I have gone ahead and got that sewn on. I did make a little marking where I'm going to add my bag tag in just a moment, but I need to cut away the exterior panel right here that is behind the overlay to expose this um, opening, this rectangle. So what I need to do is I'll grab my rotary cutter and my roller, and I'm going to be very carefully cutting through the exterior panel. Don't cut too close to the edge because you don't want to cut the overlay itself. Once you get that cut, you're going to go ahead now and cut away the exterior panel that is behind the overlay itself. Do not cut the overlay. And you do not need to make this look pretty. It does not matter what it looks like because it's all hidden behind the overlay. All right, there I have my overlay window exposed. And now we can go ahead and add our bag tag. So I've already made my marking uh, to help me identify where my center is. I'm going to use my washer and make my markings for my prongs, cut those, and then I'll install my bag tag. Now that's going to be different for everybody depending on the size of your bag tag. Just visually take a look at it. Um, keep in mind that you are going to have some uh, stitches running ac across the bottom edge right here for your actual zipper pocket. So account for that whenever you are placing. You want to make sure that you shift it down just a little bit from that top uh, straight edge right here. All right, my bag tag is now installed. So I've done the overlay on the lining as well. So now it's time for us to go ahead and place our zipper pockets behind our overlay. So you want to go ahead and remove the double sided tape. I like to just do one side at a time. All right, now we are going to go ahead and make sure that our zipper pull is to the left whenever we have the zipper closed. That's industry standard. However, if you're making this bag for someone who is left-handed, you can certainly go ahead and install it with the zipper pull to the right because that's more er ergonomic. But I am just going to go ahead and do this uh, the standard way, even though I am left-handed. 
All right, um, once you remove that double-sided tape, go ahead and just place the zipper pocket uh, on the back side of your exterior panel, and you're gonna go ahead and press it down. Then you'll go in and remove the double-sided tape from the opposite side right here, which I'll do in just a moment. And make sure that your zipper itself is centered perfectly in the window. Mine's wonky at the moment. I just need to go ahead and do this off camera so I can um, be straight over top of the panel um, and see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna get this all straightened up. And then I wanna take this over to my sewing machine with the zipper pocket in the down position like I have right here. And we're gonna sew along this straight edge right here at an eighth of an inch. And I've got that top stitch now. So let's go ahead and flip this over and take our pocket lining, flip it to the top side. Then we're gonna take this over to our sewing machine and we are gonna sew down the bottom edge right here. All right, the bottom edge is now top stitched. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna close up the sides of our pocket. So the way we do that is we place this on our sewing machine, right side up. You're gonna go ahead and fold over the exterior panel out of the way, and you're gonna go ahead and sew down here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, and do the same thing for the opposite side. All right, I have gone ahead and sewn the pocket closed, and I've trimmed down my seam allowance. The last thing that we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and top stitch along both short edges right here um, to complete the rectangle. So let me get that done. All right, both of my zipper pockets are now complete in my exterior and my lining. Let's go ahead and recap what we've done so far. We've completed our exterior front and our exterior back. We have completed our lining zipper pocket, and then we have our remaining lining piece. Now, if you'd like, you can go ahead and add some slip pockets here. I don't have the instructions in the pattern for that, but it's pretty simple and straightforward if you wanna do that. So we're gonna place our panels aside for now, and we're gonna start building our gusset and our zipper panel. So grab your strap connector with the line drawn down the center and the double-sided tape along both sides, and grab your exterior gusset with your stabilizer ironed on to it already. You'll also need your two O-rings or rectangle rings. And the first thing that we wanna do is we are going to remove the double-sided tape from our strap connector, and we're gonna fold in those short raw edges to the center, just like we did on the figure eight connector. So let me get that done. My strap connector is now prepped. I have folded in those uh, long raw edges to meet the center line. I also found my center by folding it into half. And then with a air erasable pen, I just went ahead and made a little marking uh, along the edge right here. And then the next thing that I did is from each of these short raw edges, I measured in three inches and drew a little line. I did that for this side as well. What we wanna do now is we're gonna take our uh, O-ring or our rectangle ring and slide it on the strap connector, folding over the short raw edge to meet that uh, line that we just drew at the three inch mark. And go ahead and clip that and repeat for the opposite side. From here, we can go ahead and find our centers on our gusset uh, by doing the same thing. You fold it in half and then I just cut uh, with my scissors a little notch within the seam allowance. I did that for the short and the long sides. Here we wanna go ahead and place some double-sided tape along the wrong side of our strap connector, so I'll get that done. I've applied my double-sided tape. Now I'm gonna remove the paper backing and I am going to get this centered um, vertically and horizontally and place this down on my gusset. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and sew this into place. So just like I did with the figure eight connectors, I come in first and I sew along the sides here of the O-rings. You don't wanna go too close with these O-rings because they do have a little bit of bulk to them. So make sure that you um, are sewing a little bit further away than you think you want to. Do that for both sides. The next thing that I like to do is I like to start my stitching from the center on the right side right here and sew down with a 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch, it's up to you. Uh, stopping wherever I created the stitches over here. Repeat for the opposite side. Then I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and do the same thing for this side. Um, it just works better doing it in this manner because you're not fighting uh, against your O-rings right here, your hardware. So that's what I do recommend. Um, you can go ahead and back stitch if you'd like here, or you can keep your thread tails long and then just pull them off to the back side and tie them in a knot if you don't want to see any back stitching. The back stitching doesn't bother me because it's at the very bottom of the bag. You really don't see it. So that's what I like to do. There is my strap connector top stitched on my gusset. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and add a rivet just beneath the uh, stitches that I created on the left and the right hand side. My gusset exterior is now prepped, so let me go ahead and set that aside. Now we're going to work on our zipper panel. So you want to grab both your exterior and your lining pieces of your zipper panel. So here I have gone ahead and already clipped my zipper, which is the number five zipper, to my exterior zipper panel, uh, right sides together. I'm going to go ahead and base stitch this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now that is base stitched into place. Grab one of your zipper panel lining pieces, and you are going to place that on top of the zipper panel. Your zipper is going to be wrong side up, and then you'll see your right side of your um, exterior zipper panel. So clip this into place, and you're gonna sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that is sewn on, what we wanna do is we're gonna turn everything right side out to expose the zipper. I am gonna go ahead and finger press along the edges, making sure that um, both the lining and the exterior are pulled um, tightly away from the zipper. I'm then gonna come in and I'm gonna top stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, I've gone ahead and got that top stitch. I also base stitched the short sides and this raw edge right here. And this is what your zipper panel should look like. The next thing that we wanna do is repeat the same exact process to attach the opposite side of the zipper panel. So start with your exterior. Uh, clip that into place, base stitch with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Then you're going to come in with your lining, and then you're going to sew that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then do your top stitching and base stitch. My zipper panel is now complete. So the next thing that I want to do is I am going to grab my gusset that we prepared earlier. We are going to match up the short raw edge of our zipper panel with the uh, short ed raw edge of the gusset right here, placing right sides together. Clip this into place and you're going to base stitch this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That's been base stitched into place and I want to point out that my fabric did run short somehow. I'm not sure how I did that um, right here for the lining but um, at a quarter of an inch I was still able to catch that and then once we go ahead and attach the lining panel at three eighths of an inch there won't be any problem at all. Uh, that's going to be completely covered up. So let's grab our lining now. Place that right sides together with the lining side of the zipper panel. Clip this into place right here, and you're going to go ahead and sew this on with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, that is sewn on. And like I said here, it covers up that a little bit of fabric that was missing, so there's no problem there at all. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to go ahead and trim down our seam allowances to about a quarter of an inch right here. And then you're going to turn this right side out. Press your seams. Now go ahead and top stitch right here with an eighth of an inch. All right, the next thing that we want to do is we're going to bring our zipper panel to meet the short raw edge of our exterior of our gusset. So we don't want to do the lining, so make sure that that's out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and clip this into place. And you just want to go ahead and um, base stitch this with a, four, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now bring the lining to meet the lining side of the zipper panel. Clip it into place and sew this with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Trim down the seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch. Turn right side out. I'm going to go ahead and top stitch here at a eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to come in and clip my gusset and my lining together and base stitch those along both of these long raw edges at an eighth of an inch. Okay, I've got that now base stitched into place. And a little tip for you, whenever I do base stitch, uh, my gusset uh, my gusset exterior and my lining together. I actually do it from the inside uh, because the bag is designed to be round in this manner. Um, in order to get that lining to, to sit flush and even with the exterior, I find that I have better luck uh, top stitching from the inside or I should say base stitching from the inside versus if I were to go ahead and be doing it from this side, uh, I might find that my lining and my gusset don't seem to want to sit flush with each other and there might be some puckering. So that's just a little tip for you. All right, we are almost done with our Laverna crossover. Let's go ahead and put our gusset aside. And we want to go ahead now and pair up our exterior and our lining panels together. This is the way that I like to do mine. I like to take my exterior panel and my lining panel that has the zipper pocket in it and place those wrong sides together. I'm gonna to clip this into place and I'm gonna base stitch along the outside edge at an eighth of an inch. Then I like to do the same thing with the exterior back and the lining panel that does not have any pocket on it or if you have your slip pocket, it'll be that one. 
And the reason that I like to do it in this way is that I have one zipper pocket on one side of the bag and one zipper pocket on the other side. That way I don't have two zipper pockets uh, that are competing with each other with stuff inside, making it more bulky. So that's why I do it that way. So let me go ahead and get these clipped into place and base stitched. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and set aside the exterior back. I'm gonna grab my zipper panel right here, turn this wrong side out. You wanna find the top and bottom centers of your zipper panel by matching up these side seams right here. And then you're gonna clip a little notch within the seam allowance. Do that for both sides and then repeat for the bottom side as well. Now we're going to go ahead and clip the exterior gusset with the exterior panel right here, right sides together. I like to start at the top, then I go ahead and clip my bottom. And then I continue to clip around the straight edges here. All right, I've got my gusset now clipped into place. If you need to, you can go ahead and clip a few notches within the gusset itself along the curves here to make sure that you can ease that around those curves. Um, I only needed to do a few. Let me take this over to my sewing machine now and I'm gonna go ahead and sew this on with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. All right, my gusset is now sewn on on the one panel right here. So I like to take a peek by turning it right side out to make sure that I um, don't have any puckers. I'm happy with the actual end result right here. So let me take a look at it. So I am happy with this result. So let's go ahead and turn it back uh, wrong side out. Now it's time for us to go ahead and add our binding. So grab your waterproof canvas, double fold bias tape, or your fold over elastic, whichever binding that you want to use. And I've got one of my pieces right here. This is the fold over elastic from my website. And I'm gonna start by clipping this into place on the bottom side of the, um, the uh, lining right here. And I'm gonna continue clipping it all the way around. And then I'm gonna go and take it over to my sewing machine. And I'm gonna uh, sew this on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now, if you're using double fold bias tape, um, you might wanna use a different technique um, to attach your binding. Go ahead and search YouTube for uh, binding techniques if you wanna do something different. Here is my binding all clipped into place. So let me go ahead, like I said, and sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I've got my binding on. So now the next thing that I need to do is repeat the same exact process with the exterior back. So we're gonna go ahead and start clipping that into place. Sew that on with three eighths of an inch, add our binding, sew that with a quarter of an inch, and we will be ready to turn it right side out. Do make sure that you go ahead and open up your zipper before you uh, sew on the back exterior. So that way you can turn it through the zipper opening right here. Okay, my binding is now complete. All I need to do is turn it right side out. I'm gonna do that off camera. Okay, here is my Laverna turned right side out. And what I like to do when I finish a new bag is I like to stuff it really full with paper um, and then close it up. And then I give it a good press uh, down and try to kind of form the bag like I want it to be. And I'll leave it stuffed with the paper for about 24 hours. That helps to give it some form and some shape. So that's what I like to do with my bags. Now we just need to attach our crossbody strap that we sewed up earlier. So what I have done is I've already gone ahead and went ahead and inserted the short raw end around the center bar here on uh, this uh, wide mouth strap slider. This is the three quarter inch wide mouth strap slider. And you can see I've got the raw end um, in this direction. I want my bag facing um, wrong side up, so the back side of the bag. We are gonna go ahead now and insert to the opposite end of our strap through the O-ring or your rectangle ring going from right to left. And just feed that through and make sure that you don't have it twisted. And then you're gonna take the um, raw end and you're gonna insert it through the left side of your strap slider. Again, checking to make sure you don't have it twisted at all. Now we're gonna take it and feed it down through the right side of the strap slider. 
from here, we're going to take that end and we are going to go from the right to the left of the O-ring. And I'm going to go ahead and fold it over about two inches. It's completely up to personal preference how you want to do that. And I'm going to clip it. Now, I like to go ahead and um, once I've got it clipped, I put it cross body. I get it adjusted how I want it to make sure if I want to change the um, length of my strap at all. And uh, once I do that, then all I got to do is add a couple of rivets here. You can do one or two. Um, or you, if you want, you can go ahead and sew, and you are only sewing the portion that we've clipped right here or putting rivets in. Don't get your uh, rivets in this portion of the strap at all. And then the same thing here, either sew or add a couple of rivets here. Add a strap end if you like. I am going to go ahead and add my strap end. Um, so let me go ahead and get all that done. All right, there you have it. I've added my rivets and my strap end. And then here is the opposite side. I generally don't add a strap end to this side because you really don't see it whenever the strap is hanging on you. So um, that is my Laverna crossover. Let me show you what it looks like on me. And there you have it. Here is my completed Laverna crossover. I love how she turned out. And she happens to look perfect against my staycation tiered dress. This is an Ellie and Mac sewing pattern that I recently made up for myself. I'll put a link in the description box below if you'd like to purchase the pattern yourself and make one up. And as far as the Laverna crossover, I'll also put a link in the description box so you can purchase your pattern and sew along with me. If you have any questions, let me know. You can email me at contact at sewyours.com. You can also join our Facebook group and ask questions in the group. Any of us would be more than happy to go ahead and answer any questions that you might have. Also, please stop by and share photos of your completed Laverna crossover in the Facebook group or email them to me. I love seeing what you guys make with my sewing patterns. Well, now that I've sewn mine, it's time to sew yours. Bye-bye.